Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. So last week I introduced you to Vodiapi, which was this application that I built in the past three months to kind of collect all the ideas I have for YouTube videos in one location and then give you the power to kind of vote which ones you think would be, which ones you thought you wanted to see. And uh, you've been using the, you've been, use, you've been using it. It's been very exciting to watch you actually go onto Vodi Uppy and actually uh, Vodi Uppy things. Oh, the white balance. This is, I have a new window here that I'm recording and the sun is going in and out. So that's why I just looked like a ghost there for a sudden second. I already have the top voted item, 19 things uh, to 10. So I think I owe it to you all in many ways to make this video, uh, which is not this video, I'll tell you that much, but I think it's a thing that, you know, um, I kind of owe it to you for actually like using the, the, the application that I made. And then of course people are submitting ideas as well, which is awesome, thank you so much. Um, but one of the things that I've realized that I didn't add in to this initial release, so people are, are testing it, which is fine, like that's totally cool, uh, but I also need a way to de delete things that are just meaningless. Uh, there's no way to delete anything right now in this app, and I figured that would kind of be a fun um, pair programming session for both of us to see how to make a full stack feature, which is to delete an item here. So uh, let's pull up my local environment here. I have my server running over here, and I have in here the let admin delete an item. Um, so the first things that we wanna do, uh, the way I envision this feature essentially is that for admins, which is only me, I'm the only admin, I'm gonna add a new icon here for deleting, and it requires UI to be added to make an API call to an endpoint that'll then hit the database. So it's a three part process. Um, in these situations, I usually like to work from the back end forward because I wanna make sure that the underlying code works as expected. So in my case, I have my DV folder and I have my item down, which is all the, um, where I put all the functions that modify items. So you can see here, we have get all items. We have one that's to um, create an item. So in our case, what I want to do is to delete an item. Uh, I'm just gonna put this all the way at a, the bottom. I'm gonna do export async function uh, delete item. Uh, we're gonna have it be given the ID, which I wanna have it just be a string because my application largely works in strings with things. Um, Let's do some copy and pasting because this is mostly boilerplate here. Uh, I'm getting the connection to my MongoDB database. God, I still look like a ghost kind of, don't I? Sun really came out in force. All right, there we go. Uh, I'm getting the database and then I'm getting the items collection in the MongoDB database. So I have the collection here. And then I also wanna make sure that I have a actual object ID because the MongoDB node driver works on object ID object instances, not strings here. So in this case, I'm gonna make this actually an object ID. So uh, uh, item object ID, just to make it very clear. And then I think all I'm gonna do is say return await collection, uh, remove, delete one, I guess that's what it is. This is why I love VS Code because this is saying this is deprecated remove. Use delete one or delete many. So I'm gonna actually use uh, delete one. And this takes in a filter query, which I already kind of know, uh, but I can pretty much do uh, ID is item object ID. I'll save that. So that should return the result whether it's okay or not. So this is the DAO side. And then I wanna hook this up to the API. So with Next.js, you have pages, API, items. I'm gonna do it on here. So actually in here, so this is, this endpoint is the one that you can use to get an individual item, to update an individual item, and I'm gonna add support for deleting it. So let's do some copy paste because that is, what I like to do, it makes things a lot faster. I'm gonna copy all of this body right here. 
let's just go here. So we're gonna say if method equals delete, then we're gonna get the user from the session. So when I make that request to the API, I have a cookie, so I'm grabbing the user from there. Uh, if there's no user, then return forbidden. Um, can this user edit this item? This is a helper function that I made, which essentially just says, um, are, was the item created by the viewer? So I call a viewer the person who's logged in, so like that cookie that you have. Um, when you're operating on this item, did you create it? Or are you an admin? Um, uh, in point of fact, in this case, I actually only care if you're an admin um, because I'm not even gonna let anyone delete their stuff, which is a little bit weird, but that's how, kind of how I want the feature to work. Only admins can delete things. Otherwise you can delete a item that I was gonna work on and I won't know about it. Um, okay, and that's it. Let me see what else we have here. Okay, then we're just gonna, so if we're not an admin, do, 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 do. Oh, okay, let's do this actually. I deleted some code, but I'm gonna actually move this code down here. And I'm gonna say, if you are not an admin, then again, I'm gonna say 403. I never remember what the status codes are. Let's do 403 status code forbidden. Right, that's what I want. So if you're not an admin, you're getting a 403. Otherwise, what we can do, is let's copy this again. And we're gonna save that. We're gonna say remove, or what did I call this method? I called it delete item from the item DAO. Item DAO, I'm gonna say delete item. Can we import this? Yes, this is why VS Code automatically imported it for me. Uh, delete item, and we're gonna pass in the ID, which I've done this work before, so I'm just gonna kind of I guess we'll have this be from the path item ID. There we go. There is the item ID. I'm just gonna pass it right there and save it. Okay, so now we have this hooked up in total. Um, let's keep going. I'm gonna kind of do this blind. Uh, if I was actually writing this uh, with less confidence, I would actually test this endpoint in isolation to show you what I mean by that. Let me show you what I would actually do. So in here I have, uh, let's do this one. So here's something that's fun. So I'm gonna open up the inspector. This is like how I usually do code. So I'm gonna to go to edit. You can see it's hitting that endpoint. This is the endpoint that I'm working on. This uh, items one is doing a get request. When I do an update, it makes a put request right here. So I'm actually going to right click, copy as fetch, go back over here. Oops. So this thing's really cool, this copy as fetch feature, because it kind of gives you the fetch command that you're running in the browser, and then I can edit it as I want to mess around with things. So I'm gonna make this del method delete. Um, I'm actually gonna delete the body. So uh, if now the, if I copy and paste this in here, uh, this item should be deleted. So let's try that. Network, here's the delete. And the response is okay. Cool, look at that. Okay, I don't wanna have all this returned. Uh, let's just have the item DAO uh, response equals return response uh, result okay. Uh, okay is equal to one. So this is actually gonna return a Boolean. Promise Boolean. Just like that. So then we actually hit this. Uh, we return true. Now, if I refresh this page, it should be gone, right? Yeah, nothing here because I deleted it. Ha <laughs> ha. Let's find another unlucky soul to delete this one. So let's grab this. So we're going to place this in here. That ID. All right, let's clear this to make things less confusing. Let's clean this. All right, now let's paste this in. Network this, true. So this has been successfully deleted. So the endpoint is working, and now let's get this hooked up to the app at large. So we have the database is good. The endpoint is good. So what I wanna do is add an icon here that lets me delete things. Let's go into my item component. 
which I actually need to like rename this better because I find it a little bit confusing that I have uh, items, item, item now. It's a little confusing, but whatever. What's my edit right here? So can edit, can edit is can be edited. I want actually to know if this person is an admin because only admins can delete things. So we're gonna say, uh, I've already done this somewhere else, I'm sure. Filter is where I actually, nope, it's in the index page. And this is the benefit of making it yourself. Is admin, here we go. Is admin session ID, so let's go over here. Can edit, right, like that. So this is the session user from the cookie. The role, if the role is admin, then is, is admin. I'm gonna actually put this over here. So I'm gonna put this right before. Is admin. Uh, we are going to have a button that is going to be the X. This is lovely work of emojis design. On click, for now, let's just call this be alert. Delete me. So if I go here, oh, nope, that's not how I wanted to delay it up. This is not aligning correctly. Absolute right zero. Uh, we're gonna make um, can edit. Make a little wrapper for these two. Uh, div. So you see what happened here is that this button showed up all the way over here, which I click it, it works fine. I want it to be on the right with uh, the edit button, and I did a really ugly hack here where I just made it absolutely positioned right. That's not gonna work now that I have two buttons in here. So let's actually move these this class name onto the container, the joys of uh, Tailwind here. And then let's open you up, move that in there. And then let's just move this link in there because this is already inside of there. All right, now if I refresh that, cool. So that's all aligned horribly, but that's okay. Why is this aligned horribly? We got this, this absolute right, and this button, button. Why is this not being, this is relative, oh, to do top maybe? Right zero, top zero. Boinga, there we go. Here we go. And then we're gonna add a little spacing as well. We're gonna do, uh, space horizontally two. Let's save that. There we go. Spaced out nice and good. So now if I open this up in the incognito page, you won't see those icons at all as I want. Uh, edit still works. And then I'm going to add this little delete button, delete me. So let's add this delete me functionality. Do do do. We have to do a new hook. I'm going to go over here. And we are going to do, where's the use edit? Here's use edit. And we're gonna actually do use delete item, item ID. This is gonna be delete, uh, delete item. And then we're going to invalidate all these things. There's no body here, just like that. So use, so the, the joys of, boilerplate. Uh, so I'm copying and pasting a lot of code, but um, it's uh, easy because the code works for me. So in this case, we want to do, uh, uh, where is this? Delete item equals this. Oh, whoa, whoa. Let's do string item ID, because right now I've this more times than I feel comfortable to do. Paste that in there, go in here, and then in here, what we should be able to do, add vote, add data, remove vote. Is this remove data? Ah, okay, so I just want to delete items. So let's go back down till we have that alert. I'm actually just going to replace this. Um, on success, I just want to redirect 
back to the home page, I think. Let's do this. Let's do what I call this uh, const result equals await. It's an async function. Uh, if result equals true, then we want to say alert success successfully deleted. And then we're going to window location equals home. Okay. Uh, why are you not happy there? Window location assign. Let's do that instead. There we go. So we back back to the home page. So let's see if all this works together. I'm going to delete this. Successfully deleted. Look at that. Okay, that works. If I go back here, it is gone. Uh, let's actually do this. Um, uh, confirm. Are you sure? How does confirm work? Confirm MDN. I always get confused. Uh, result. Ah. Um, we're going to say if not confirm return. So if you're not sure... And we want to just say, we just want to bail out. So hit this. Are you sure? Cancel. Nothing happens. So React Writer from scratch is still there. However, I do play with Slackbot and delete that. Hit OK. It is gone. And look at that. That's the entire feature. That's pretty cool. I always like to review my code after I changed it. The database added this one little nice function. I'm going backwards in. So here's the method, the uh, API method. So I'm importing that other database function, editing this here, making sure that you're an admin. If request user, wait, get user from session. Request method delete. If you're an admin, I want some spacing there. So I have consistent spacing. This is why I review things. If you're not an admin, then return forbidden. Otherwise, uh, there's a better response code than 200. Um, response code uh, modified. 204, no, I'll just leave it at 200, that's fine. And then I have the item, which is doing a lot more, is admin, session user roles admin, don't really see that. Modifying the UI for it to make sure they all align correctly. And this uh, hook as well. And so let's go to the readme. Let admin delete an item. Let's mark it as an X. Comment in here. Save it all. Push it up. Uh, and let's push it. And in about four minutes, it should be here. So uh, let's wait. But that's that's a little full stack example of adding a new functionality to Vodiuppi. Uh, I definitely get the benefit of having written everything. So that's why I was able to do that so quickly. But hopefully you kind of get a little of insight and you enjoy kind of watching me walk through adding that feature. Nice little full stack uh, feature. Um, let me see, it's still building. I'm curious to see when it's done. Create an optimized build. I'll just do this with you. I'm gonna do this entire feature in 20 minutes in my sleep deprived mind, but hopefully you enjoyed that. Um, that's not exactly what the course is gonna be like. It's gonna be a little bit more, I think, thought through than this. This is all this is all off the cuff. I haven't practiced any of this for better or for worse. But in the course, I'm gonna really focus on teaching you the things as you've seen in my other videos, like really going in depth and stepping things one by one. But uh, this is just about uploaded, the build outputs. And it is there, populating build cache. So now if I go here, refresh, here we go. I have the ability to delete. So I go to pending and I will delete your testing one here and let's hit okay. And successfully deleted. Look at that. We got it. Full feature. Hope you enjoyed that. And I did. So that makes at least one of us. Thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one.